In this demonstration, we're going to show you how to use CalMAN to calibrate a PC monitor. In this particular demo, we're using a laptop and we're calibrating its built-in monitor when CalMAN is running on the same machine. I've opened the Monitor Advanced Workflow, and this is the splash page where we will set up our calibration. The first thing we need to do is select whether it's a networked or local calibration. Networked would mean you're calibrating another computer over the network. In this particular one, like I said before, we are calibrating the built-in display on this laptop. So we're going to select this computer instead of networked computer. For target operating system, we're going to select Windows. And we're going to select single monitor since we're calibrating just the laptop screen. Hit next. Now I've already installed our Client 3 software that acts as the ICC and 1D LUT uh, calibration profile manager as well as the pattern generator. We're going to connect to the client. I'm going to select this machine name which is this. Hit connect. Hit next. Now we will find our meter. I have a SpectraCal C6 plugged into the USB port on the laptop. I will hit search. For the meter mode, I'm going to select white LED. Almost all laptops in the last five years are white LED. Only a few higher end workstation ones that are able to support a wider color gamut than sRGB would use a different backlight type. Most likely that would be blue-green LED. Probably 99.9% .9 of all laptops are white LED. We will go to next. We will select what our white point is, in this case D65, and our gamma target is sRGB because we're calibrating the laptop to conform with the sRGB color space and gamma. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to put the meter on the laptop screen itself and hang it over the pattern window. This is a pattern window that flashes if you're calibrating uh, a machine where CalMAN is actually running on the machine you can do this. If you're doing one over the network you have to put the meter on the machine that you're connecting to and then client 3 would act as a pattern generator where in this case we're using the patterns built into the workflow. If we didn't do that then for every reading Client 3 would take over the whole screen and we wouldn't be able to see what we were doing while the calibration was happening. So now that we have the meter on the screen in the pattern area, I'm going to hit read series. This is going to read what our current calibration of this display is and give us a baseline so we can compare afterwards to what the after calibration results are. Now just by visually looking at this monitor I can tell it's way too blue so what we're seeing here is um, measurements confirming that fact. Essentially if this was perfectly calibrated red, green, and blue lines would be right on zero line going all the way across. This shows us there's way too much blue in the white. Now it's measuring the color gamut. This is going to take a few minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. We're going to hit Next. Now this page is mainly intended for external monitors that have a contrast control. Essentially, I'll show you what, what this chart would look like. And it's for detecting clipping, which you would reduce the contrast. Since this is a laptop display, it doesn't have a contrast control. It just has a backlight control, so we're going to skip this step. This is a two-point white balance control page. A lot of external monitors have either a two-point white balance control or at least an RGB gains control, which is considered a one-point white balance control. Laptops don't have that, so this page we're not going to do for because we don't have these controls in our display. Now we're going to check the luminance. This laptop is used in an office environment so I'm going to reduce the luminance. So currently it's 214 nits. I'm going to bring it down to like 150. That's what I usually target for an office environment. I'm going to reduce the luminance. I'm going to take a measurement again. 130. I'm going to go up, back one up, setting on the backlight. Now it's at 156. 
that's usually what I like my displays, like I said, in an office environment. I'm going to go next. Now this is where we calibrate the 1D lookup table or gamma table in the video card. That corrects the grayscale, gamma, and white point. So essentially we just hit the auto cal button. It's going to ask us how many points we want to do. If you don't get satisfactory results with the defaults, then you can, you can uh, calibrate it at more points. Hit OK and it will run through the process of the AutoCal of the grayscale. This is going to take a few minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. The AutoCal of our grayscale has been complete. I'm going to hit OK. The average LTE is now under 1. It was over 12 before. Now we're going to check our luminance again. We've lost a little bit. Essentially, we had to reduce the amount of blue and the white to, to hit our D65 white point, but that what that did is that reduced the luminance slightly. So I'm going to see if I can bump this up one more notch, get back to where we were. Okay, so that worked. We're at 153 nits. I'm going to go next. Now we're going to create the ICC profile. What this does is essentially it measures the display, puts the primary coordinates in a file, so then the operating system or ICC aware apps know exactly what the display does for its red, green, and blue primaries. So if it needs to do any color transforms to make things look correct based upon what uh, color gamut the content was intended for, this gives the operating system or the ICC aware apps that information to do those color transforms properly. Most monitors come with a generic ICC profile, but this one is based on actual measurements, so it'll be a lot more accurate. We're going to hit the AutoCal button, hit OK. This is going to take a few minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. Our ICC profile has been completed, hit OK. We're going to go to Next. This has been populated with our pre-calibration measurements. Now we're going to run a read series. It will do the exact same measurements, but now with our new calibration profile applied. This is going to take a few minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. So here's our results. The grayscale delta E was 0.69. The color check one was 1.84. Most of the error it looks like it's coming from the fully saturated red and green and blue primaries are slightly undersaturated. That's just the physics of the dis this type of display in this manufacturer that made this display. And essentially, there's nothing that we can do to make it more saturated. That's just the physics. But we can fix inside the gamut and that's what the ICC profile has done. So even though our red, green, and blue primaries are still undersaturated, most of the colors inside the gamut where most actual content is, most content doesn't have fully saturated colors like 100% saturated red. Um, all those are, are very accurate now. So the next page is a visual verification page where you can compare using our uh, color comparator what the pre-calibration grayscale was, these are what the actual measurements was, and this is the targets. This is the actual measurements, and these are the targets, and this is the color checker. Those were the actual measurements, and this is after. So you can see all the colors are almost indistinguishable until you get to the 100% saturated red, red, green, blue, and cyan, yellow, magenta, because the display was undersaturated. If this was uh, a multi-monitor calibration, you would start the workflow over again, and in, when you went to calibrate the display, you would pick your second monitor in here. If I had a second monitor hooked up, I would select it from the drop down in display mode and then redo the whole process to calibrate the second monitor.